All right, Boston, we are back, and it's time for us to head into the year seven offseason with your Boston Bruins after a very disappointing year number seven. Once again, the best team in the NHL, a very good regular season record on autopilot. We made the trade for Jack Eichel at the trade deadline. We have such an outstanding team, but we ran into the, the lethal power forward playmaker sniper combination of uh, the Winnipeg Jets. And they absolutely destroyed us. I know it was seven games. We had two chances to win the Stanley Cup, but I just did not feel confident the entire. I didn't feel confident the entire playoff run. And our team is getting older. While well, the Winnipeg Jets are right there in their prime, so we had another chance to get back and win the Stanley Cup. But no, it looks like Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand have had five trips to the Stanley Cup Finals, and uh, unfortunately, they are two and three now. All right, they've lost three times in the Cup Finals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're here at the draft, setting up year number eight, and we got some good news. Uh, once again, we have the LA Kings draft pick. This is the last year that we have it, and uh, we've scored again, won the draft lottery with the second overall pick. So when it was all said and done, um, we had the second overall pick for this year, but letting go of Charlie McAvoy for an offer sheet that netted us two defensemen in, hang on a second, defenseman, in Carson Lambos, who is medium elite, 82 overall, 23 years of age. It gave us Kreitzer, who is top four, 80 overall, 21. He's going to be getting the chance to play in his rookie season next year. So two defensemen right there. It also gave us Tulipoff. Who had the who was drafted second overall last season? So a 19-year-old at 83 overall playmaker, and we have the second overall pick for this season. So those four players straight up for Charlie McAvoy. Yeah, it certainly worked out for us. All right, and uh, considering we have Jack Eichel, I mean, even though Brad Marchand and uh, and uh, what's his name Patrice Bergeron are getting older, we still have a very good coach. We still have a very good team. I want to answer back and try to win a Stanley Cup in year number eight and uh strap yourselves in because during the live stream we're going all year long going through the regular season and hopefully rounds one two three and four all right and if you're watching this on youtube man you're missing out because on twitch when it comes to the playoffs there's nothing like it man um all right so i'll give you guys a quick look at the draft class i've already done a poll right here with the twitch fans the scouts uh, we have Ed Homer, who's projected to go first overall. Xavier Kunitz, who's projected to go second. Uh, Yuri Kapitanov, the Lit Lit Lithuanian, <laughs> as the fans are calling him. He's projected to go third. We'll see and Jazz. Now, we have the second overall pick. Um, I don't know who we want to get just yet, but the fans were voting for Yuri Kapitanov. The reason being is if he is an offensive defenseman, he may be a two-way defenseman, but if he's an offensive defenseman, that's the replacement for Tori Krug. Even if... He's a two-way defenseman. Um, him and Lambos both being medium elites. Those two guys can take you into the future. And you can part ways with Hayden Fleury, Jake Bean, uh, 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 eventually Tory Krug, Brendan Carlo. And you can find some, uh, some lesser offensive defensemen through a trade, like 82-83 overall, to help get the plus three for both of those guys and then use the offensive defenseman on the power play. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, but we already have like a center in Tulipov and in Eichel and in Pasternak and in point, right? the playmakers um past max a winger but kunitz right i don't think we need a guy like this ed homer if he was available i think i'd select him because he could be a sniper and if he's first overall it's going to be a good player uh we'll see a left winger we don't know if he's going to be a two-way forward uh, a playmaker a sniper but the point is we do not need any more forwards we're not drafting for the future necessarily we're drafting for next year and uh, if we have, a, if we can have a guy who can come in and help us out, just like Tulipov did this season, that's the guy we have to go after. And uh, we're going to need defensemen for the future. We already have tons of forwards, so it looks like Yuri Kapitanov is the guy. But I want to—I I didn't actually even ask the guys in the Twitch chat this: if Yuri Kapitanov gets taken first overall, which probably won't happen, who do we select then? We got to go with Homer, right? We have to go with Homer, right? It's—it's it's obvious. Like, if Kapitanov goes first, we just have to go with uh, with Ed Homer, right? Yeah, everyone's saying Homer Simpson. All right, good. So it's Kapitanov or Homer. Those are our depth charts for the upcoming NHL entry draft. And uh, 
when it comes to what our team looks like for next season. All right, so we're going to be parting ways with Tyler Parsons, garbage goaltender, couldn't get shit done in the playoffs. Um, he was actually an 85 overall, but he's dropped back down to an 83. Uh, he's making two and a half million, so I just want to get that cap off the team. We gave uh, Fritz Meyer, our backup, an extension at 2.250. So we're going to use him as our starter backup because in the system, we have this low franchise goalie, Para, whose potential has actually grown because of our head coaches down there in the AHL. They've actually helped these young guys grow. And another good season for Para, 9.25 save percentage, right? So... Considering Fritz Meyer is only an 81, 82, Parr is only an 83, this guy, you could see him jump to 82, 83 by next season, and he could be the guy. And we have him for another year at a minor league deal, and we could sign him long-term, perhaps at the beginning of the season, if we like what we see. So we're going to go with Parra, all right? We're going to get rid of Parsons, free up some cap space right there. Defenseman, uh, we're going to bring Tory Krug back. We got Hayden Flurry. I got Brendan Carlo. We're going to part ways with Jake Bean. We took a chance on Jake. Uh, we signed into a good contract. It's not going to hurt us, but uh, he does not fit in with this coaching setup. So I want to try to find maybe another offensive defenseman or just um, trade him for picks because if Yuri Kapitanov is that offensive defenseman, then he's going to be the guy. And we also have uh, Kreitzer. So. I have to trade Jake Bean right now and then make another trade come preseason more than likely and get rid of another defenseman on the team based on uh, who's the most valuable, right? And then forwards, we got we got a plethora of forwards. We got a bunch of guys, so I just got to go into the resign stage and see who I want to bring back. All those guys who have cheap contracts, they're going to get paid right now, so we just got to see what we have. We're not really acquiring any pieces at the draft. Rather, we're unloading assets for uh, draft picks all right or prospects on minor league deals so that's essentially it the year seven stanley cup champs the winnipeg jets i think i showed you guys the awards let's just go over them again quickly just to get it back in your heads it has been about a week so the winnipeg jets my god man president's trophy the boston bruins look at that two times in the last two years we've been the best regular season team and uh nothing to show for it Three times in the last five years, we've dominated the President's Trophy. Uh, but the Stanley Cup, man, we won it in 22-23, and then we lose to the Stanley Cup champions Detroit. We lose to the Stanley Cup champions Tampa. We lose to the Stanley Cup champions the Winnipeg Jets. You can make the argument that we've been the second best team in the NHL three seasons in a row. It's so, oh, it should have been a dynasty for us, man. I'm pissed off with that. Individual awards, Art Ross, McDavid, Hart goes to Nate. Uh, James Norris goes to Morris, uh, Morgan. James Norris goes to Morris. Wow, I'm an idiot. Morgan Riley. Lady Vin goes to Nate McKinnon. Calder goes to Finley. Con Smythe goes to Mark Shifley. And by the way, I think I watched that glitch back from Mark Shifley. What did it say in the finals? You guys in the Twitch chat. What did it say when he won the Con Smythe? It was like 14 assists or something. No goals. What did it say? You guys uh, must remember that. It was a 14 assists. Zero goals, 19 assists, right? Zero goals, 19 assists. I think that glitch showed what he did in the Stanley Cup Finals. Which means that in seven games, Mark Shifley had zero goals, 19 assists against my team. 19 assists in seven fucking games. Get the fuck out of here. Center, uh, playmaker, sniper, power forward combination, man. Unbelievable. 19 assists in seven games played. Give me a break. All right, so the chemistry got us there. So we've gone through everything. We know the player we want to draft. We know who we want to unload. Let's get to the year seven NHL entry draft, all right? And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before I trade away my players, I want to see who they pick. All right, so again, we'll just quickly look at the draft class, see if anything's changed. See if anything's changed. Homer, Kunitz, and Kapitanov. My scouts are saying draft Kunitz. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm listening to the fans here, so I'm in the I'm in safety zone right now. I can't be blamed. They voted for Yuri Kapitanov. We need defensemen. We don't need forwards. But, uh, you know, if there's a stud out here, the best forward in the NHL for the next 10 years, I'll be pissed. So the first overall pick to the Columbus Blue Jackets goes Ed Homer. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that would have been nice. I would have taken Ed Homer. Medium franchise sniper. Yeah, that's an example of somebody who's an absolute stud. This guy's going to be the best player in the NHL. Once he hits like 90 overall, I don't know how many shots he's going to take, but he he's a god. So had we gotten the first overall pick, uh, yeah, 307. Oh, he's going to be a god in the NHL. Ed Homer, Homer Simpson, boys. 99 speed already. What? Yeah, well, you know what? That makes sense. These young guys coming into the NHL. It's 89 speed. 89 speed already. Yeah, that would, I would have taken him over uh, uh, the Lit uh, Lithuanian for sure, man. 
I mean, even though you have Cody West on the team, Cody West second line, Ed Homer first line, both of them plus five. I mean, you wouldn't, you'd be on a diet. You'd win the cup 10 years in a row. Uh, all right, so make the pick. All right, we only have two minutes. There's no reason to call any timeouts. You have Xavier Kunitz, Kapitanov, Wilsey. I'll give you the numbers again. 36-58, Kapitanov, 6-9, but an A-plus league, and he's a defenseman. And Wilsey, 55-66. Those are some pretty good numbers for Wilsey. All right, so who am I going with, guys? Just once again, Kunitz, Yuri, Russian, Russian, Kunitz is high elite. I, 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 even if he is, boys, do we need another center? That's the one thing we don't need. I wouldn't mind. I, I, I think I'd rather take Wilsey over Kunitz just because of the position. But yeah, everyone's saying Kapitanov. We've already done the vote. Yeah, we're drafting. He's 6'3", 18 years of age. I just, if he's an offensive defenseman, it's a beautiful pick. If he's a two-way defenseman, it's a good pick, but it's not as good as we hoped. So, the lit, yeah, the lit Lithuania. I'm going with it, boys. Yuri Kapitanov. Yuri, Yuri, Yuri. Offensive defenseman! Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! -hoo -hoo -hoo! All right, that's perfect. That is perfect. That's absolutely perfect. That is the left-handed replacement for Tori Krug. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So now Lambos and Kapitanov both take over different player types. Kreitzer is not useless now, right? Because now we have two two-way defensemen... And we can get rid of Hayden Fleury eventually if Kreitzer ends up working out on this team. It's pretty good. Here's his offensive stats. Good skater. Mid-80s. Yeah, just give him a year. Give him a year. Body checking. Give him a year. He needs a good year. Um, I'd say a year in the AHL considering we are a Stanley Cup contender. Would you guys agree with that? All right. I, I, I wouldn't say I want to bring him up right away. See how he does in the AHL. If he grows quickly, we can bring him up at the trade deadline. All right. First line forward. Fuck yeah. NHL now. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, nothing wrong has happened here, boys. That is a solid pick. So, when it's all said and done, uh, offer trade. Yeah, yeah. When it's all said and done, I'll give you guys, oh, yes! I'll give you guys a beautiful visual, all right? It's all said and done. So, the LA Kings, right? It's all said and done. Mac, he's 28 years of age, four years left. This is what we got for Charlie McAvoy, all right? All said and done. We got that. We got that. We got that we got three defensemen for McAvoy <laughs> holy shit we got that so there it was all right for McAvoy we got Lambos Kreitzer Tulipoff and Kapitanov pretty good trade value it's on our side it's on our side right pretty freaking that's a win yeah it took a while for us to get there but the LA Kings have been nothing since that and we have just picked up the future of the Boston Bruins and they're all on my look 13.9 million screw you Charlie McAvoy Less than a million for each one of these guys. Yeah, that's how it should be done. Uh, don't forget West. Well, the thing about Cody West, guys, we didn't get Cody West from, uh, 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 what's his name? We didn't get Cody West from uh, uh, Charlie McAvoy. We got Cody West by trading Jonas Brodeen to Washington. They just missed the playoffs, and then they won the draft lottery, moving up from, like, 12 to 3. So, yeah, it was, it, it was that. Not Lambos, you dumb F. Check the picks. West, not Lambos. I'm, I guarantee you guys it was not West. It might not even... If it wasn't Lambos, it was somebody else. It was like another top four. But the fact that we got Tulipov and Kapitanov from McAvoy, just those two guys alone makes it worthwhile. All right, so uh, that was a win. That was a win. Lambos was year one. Oh, Lambos was year one, was he? Well, then it was it was something along those lines. I forget when it when exactly it was. But the fact, the fact is, we got Tulipov and... Now, Kunitz. Ooh... Do you guys think we made the right uh, call? We already have Tulipov, and we have Eichel, and we have Point. I think we got the better player there. Not even the better player. We just needed an offensive defenseman. We were drafting position. We were drafting skill. Good call. He's a good player, though, Kunitz. Not bad. Not bad. So Ottawa's going to like that player. Could you imagine you got Kunitz and Homer first and second overall in the same draft? That would be your team. All right, so Sim pick. Let's see Florida Panthers. Wilsey, all right, so Wilsey was a two-way forward. Could have been something decent for us because we could have used a two-way forward. The replacement for Brad Marchand, essentially. But it's still, I'm very happy. Even though he's a less overall, I'm still happy with that. What about Jazz? Jazz, center playmaker. Yep, so the uh, the lethal Latvian Jazz. Uh, next up, St. Louis. And it drops off to Allison. All right, so the top five had some really good players in it this year. 
three playmakers, oh no, a sniper, two playmakers, a two-way forward, and the one defenseman. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Happy with that pick. Good call, boys. Good call. You guys were right. Homer Simpson was the best player. And had I had the first overall pick, I would have gone with Homer because you just can't pass up on a medium franchise. Um, I would tra I would trade away Cody West for uh, an offensive defenseman, right? You can't pass up on that. But uh, I'm really happy with that draft pick. I'm very, very happy with that draft pick. All right. So now what we have to do is we just need to free up some cap space. All right. Get the players off the team that we know we don't want. So first off, it's going to be Tyler Parsons. Garbage Parsons. You're trash. Freaking horrible. All right. We got uh, Para for next year. So Parsons, I'm going to send... I just want to get him off the team. So let's see. Let's trade into a team that uh, doesn't hurt us at all. So like the Western Conference. Uh, no, not Toronto. Second round pick from next year from Calgary. Sound good? Back, send him back to Calgary. Send him back out west to a Pacific division. Chicago. Well, Chicago. I mean, it's the same. I, I, it's the same thing. I mean, good enough. Chicago. All right. You guys wanted to trade to Chicago. All right. So Parsons to Chicago for a second and a fifth in this year's pick. There you go. Look at all the options. I did. I did. There was just, I don't want draft picks. I can get Columbus, but I'm not trading to the East. I don't need goalies in the East. That would be a pain in the ass, man. So yeah, Chicago it is. Except trade. Bang. There you go, Tyler Parsons. Get the hell off the team. All right, so that freed up a little bit of cap space. Uh, next up, right? Go. Oh, yeah, defenseman. All right, so yeah, it's perfect. Now with Tory Krug at 35, we just we run Tory Krug into the ground essentially. Try to keep him as good as he can, but eventually there's going to be a switch over where Kapitanov is superior, and then we put Kapitanov with the veteran Brendan Carlo, and hopefully we still get that plus five. So Krug, Flurry is staying, Carlo is staying, Bean is staying, no, Bean is the one out, because Bean, even though he's got a good contract, we took a chance on him, he just didn't fit in on this team, so let's get him off the team right now before that contract becomes immovable. All right, so let's see what we got. McMillan. Ooh, we got a first overall pick. All right, let's see if we can get a first rounder for next year and take a chance on the lottery again. Let's see. Hang on. Ampus Lindholm. No, I don't want any. I can get. I can get first rounders from this year. Markinen. I don't want any. I don't want any prospects. I want a draft pick. We have enough prospects. I want to continue to have because the, what the draft pick for next year does is it gives me trade bait. And the trade bait can be really good if the uh, draft pick becomes something good because the team's not that good. Hang on a sec. Is there any first overall picks from next year? Two seconds. Logan Couture. No, thank you. Tampa Bay from... No, I'm not giving them to Tampa Bay. I do not need them to come back. All right, so hang on a second. That was another pick. Reardon. Fine trade. I'm not trading him to Tampa, boys. That would be real stupid. Uh, Jake Bean. All right, hang on a second. Because uh, even though... St I think Stamco's retired, right? Did Stammer retire? Stamco's retired, so yeah, we can uh, Winnipeg. Oh, Winnipeg's, uh, but Winnipeg's a good team. No, no, fuck that. I ain't trading to Winnipeg. Fuck that shit. I ain't making them better. Hmm. Yeah. So it looks like we're just going to get a draft pick for this year, boys. We're not going to get one for next season. So the 26th to Anaheim and the 3rd for next year. Sound good? That's fine for me. 27th and a 3rd. Yeah, that's pretty good. 20s, it's good, boys. We could score like a top six or a top four defenseman with that. That's pretty good. That's all we need. What the hell? Oh, shit. I just hit my HDMI cable. Are we still here? You guys still see shit on the screen? Is things still moving? Yeah, I think we're good. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. See, this is me not cheesing the game, guys. All right? I, I, when, I, when I'm trying to dump a player, it's not like a high-value player. I got to do a fine trade and just accept it. I want the computer to be able to... Look at our picks. No, no, no. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. That's going to give us a 26th and uh, the 3rd. Yeah, I'm going to take that. Accept trade. All right? We don't need to. Uh, this is the way of not cheesing the game. Sometimes, if you're just trying to get a player off, uh, you got to see what the other teams are offering. You just got to take the best one. All right? If you're trying to work the system for every trade, yeah, you can really end up not liking the universe you've created because you've made it too easy for yourself. All right? So, I'm keeping it realistic. So, Krug, Fleury, Carlo, Larson, Lambos, Kreitzer, and Kapitanov. That'll give us seven defensemen, but we're going to have plenty of cap space to get these guys signed. So I'm going to go into the season with seven, see which six are the best, and then have another trade bait. Same thing that we did with Jonas Brodeen, essentially. Uh, and forwards, who else were we getting off the team? Hang on a second. I got Parsons off the team. Hang on, let me just go, oh, actually, all skaters, and let me just see the draft picks. I mean, uh, the salary. All right, so salary situation. 
And we're keeping you, keeping you, keeping you, keeping you, keeping you, keeping you. Yeah, keeping you. You're fine at 8.750. Uh, Brendan Carlo, keeping you. Larson. Larson's off the team, so I don't know if I have to resign you. Bergeron, don't know if I have to resign you. All you guys don't have extensions. Hayton, he's 83 making 1 million. That's totally worth it. I want to keep him on the team. Yeah, that's about it. All right, so we got everyone. A lot of money for DeBrusque. Yeah, but see, DeBrusque kind of goes up and down. Remember what you have? You also have to remember this is year seven, so the cap has gone up. So by year seven, like an eight seven five oh contract is really like a seven and a half. You know what I mean? Like it's gone way up there. LA pick. Look at your picks. What do you mean? Look, look at your picks. What are you guys talking about? I still have LA picks for next year. I thought we got through fo all four. What are, you what are you guys doing? Hey, you know what? I should just stay in YouTube mode. I don't even know what you guys are saying. All right. Um, all right. So we got that one. Uh, we already have cleared up the uh, the cap space. Uh, let us. Yeah, yeah. That's the cap. Yep, we're good. So let's just go to the uh, the first overall pick that we have from the Anaheim Ducks right now at pick number twenty six. All right, uh, some top ooh, some top nines being taken. We might not get lucky. Now, has there been like a high seventy guy? Because usually you can find like one high seventy in like the, the first, second, or oh, there we go. Heward, he might have been the guy. Seventy two overall, medium top six taken at uh, eighth overall. Make maybe not though. Hang on. DeBrusque is overpaid. Uh, yes and no. Because you put him beside somebody, he can jump up to an 88 overall. He's still got his top six potential. Uh, all right. So let's go through some of these players and see what we got. I just want to see if I can find somebody who's got some good stats that are popping out at you. All right. So A plus, no. A C minus right winger, no. Uh, a nine to. Ooh. Abel Talixson. 17 years of age, six foot four, with a 910 save percentage in a C league. And he's projected to go in the first round. Abel Talixson, a goalie. Now, we already have the franchise goalie, but remember, we traded away our medium elites. These goalies are good to get it because it's a, it's a trading asset, right? Like, like it could be, exactly. And we've already seen some medium top nines. So, I'm not necessarily drafting for a goalie as much as I'm drafting for just an asset here. Bust, take the goal. Well, hang on. Let's just go through the rest. Osborne, no, nah, nothing really pops out. The numbers are not bad, but they don't pop out at me. It's not, not popping out at me. OHL defenseman, no. WHL defense. That's not bad, that WHL defenseman. A lot of assists in there, but it's not jumping out at me. No. No. That's not bad. Devin Bears, four goals, three assists in an A-plus league. C-minus, no. 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 Another goalie, no. 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 No, I think I got to take that goalie, guys. Not seeing anything. Not seeing anything where it's like, ooh, this guy could be in the mid-70s kind of thing, you know? That one guy with the goals, more goals. Yeah, no, no, I'm taking the goalie, guys. Trade bait, trade bait. I think the trade bait is the one I have to go for, all right? So I'm going to ask you guys one more time. Do I have a permission? He's 17 years of age with a 9-10 save percentage. He could be a guy who's 17 already in the 60s. Usually when the guy's young like that, he's like 40 or 50 overall. This guy could be a real good goalie. Yes? Permission granted? Yeah, I'm going to take it. Abel Talixson from Calgary. Let's see. Damn, he's going to be a good goalie, guys. He's 56 overall at 17 years of age, man. You can draft goalies at 19 years of age and they come in at 56 overall. This guy is going to be a stud goalie. He's going to be a stud. His poise is already 69. He, oh, yeah. he's This guy is built to grow. He is built. Nothing's low. Everything's already like hot 69, 69, 68. Everything's right there to grow. Oh yeah, he's gonna be a good goalie. All right. So we have two prospect goalies that we can work with, Talixin and uh Para. So with Para being a low franchise, he might ask for too much money and in a couple of years. We'll just keep him on a cheap deal until he wants too much, trade him as an RFA, and then bring up Talixin. That's what you gotta do with goalies, right? I ain't paying goalies nine million anymore. No more Tuka freaking Rask. Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh. So that's good. I like that. I like that. All right, let's sim to pick 61. But I want to see if I missed out on anybody that was the 70s because I want to know what their stats looked like. The one guy. So 60, 60, 61, 62. I didn't want any 60s. All right, 63, 60, 59, 6, 67. Bomick, let's see his numbers. All right. Uh, yeah, I could see that. 27 points. 
for a defenseman, 11 goals. You can see why he's a little bit higher up there. Sniper at 66, Hughes. All right. 72, Novak. Wow, wasn't able to tell. Was not able to tell with those numbers. That would have been a good guy to, gra add to draft. Sniper. I'm not looking at potential. I'm looking at the uh, medium elite Flynn goalie. Uh, I'm looking at the overall. Sometimes you can find a guy who's like in the high 70s in like the second or third round. All right, so there's nobody been taken yet. Hang on a second. Let's try again. Let's try again. Let's see if there's anybody. Uh, could be decent. I ain't going after another goalie. We already got the goalie. Nope, I ain't going after. Nope. What? Three goal? What the hell? Four goalies in a row? Hmm. Well, hang on a second. Joffrey? No. Langlios? That's not bad. Center. Hmm. Right wing is not bad. Right wing is not bad. Ooh. Okay. So Johnny Tulozino. That's uh, that's some decent. That's some decent point totals here. Defenseman, right-handed. Johnny tu Tuzolino. I'd like to take this chance here. Now I think one of these goalies are going to be medium elites, because there's four of them in a row. But we already got our goalie. I'd like to take a chance on another uh, roster player. T uh, Tuzolino. Do I have the green light? Johnny's real name, Johnny Tuzolino. He's also, oh, he's on Calgary. Was he on the Hitman just like uh, our, our goalie? Tuzolino and uh, the goalie that we have? Yo, teammates. Keep them in a, a good mood, right? Yes. Yes, all right, so they were on the same team. So our goalie that we just drafted and now uh, the center or the defenseman who plays on front of the goalie. Perfect. All right, Johnny, let's see what you got. Come on, medium top four. All right, 63 overall, medium top six. <laughs> I didn't hit it. That's all right. He is 63 overall, but no, I, I didn't hit anything. So we're just going to sim the entire draft now. I'm just guessing at this point. All right, we're just going to sim the entire draft. There you go. Kapitanov, Talixson, Tuzolino, Scoville, Frank, Danielson, Prince, Davies, and Barnes. Way to go. All right, so solid, solid draft day. So, so let me sim up to the resign stage. Uh, let me see the... Uh, coaching staff situation all right so we have to sign an assistant coach but we still have to Goskis, who's got three years left as an a-plus coach so it's really good that we've built this guy into a stud he i mean look a-plus for offense defense power play penalty kill it's all the success that Tagaskis has had with the boston bruins take a look at his right 359 wins 167 losses 48 ties or uh, overtime losses what am i doing three president's trophies one stanley cup this guy's a beast, man. This guy's a beast. He's a god coach, yeah. And I found him as a B minus. I've I've turned him into something. And our associate coach as a veteran is an A minus. We've got to get this done. Come on, three year plan. We got to get another Stanley Cup in the next three years. Have to, have to. Uh, all right. So we just have to get one coach. That won't be a big problem. And let's quickly just take a look at the uh, the resign stage. Hang on a second. Go to contracts. Uh, rosters, goalies. All right, so we got Fritz Meyer, uh, Para is in there, and Talixson, beautiful. Let's just see if the computer drafted anyone that uh, that pops out at me. Uh, top six, top six, top, no, no one there. Right wingers, uh, top six, no. Uh, top nine, no. Scoville, uh, top nine, no, 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 nobody there. And centers, uh, nobody there. All right, so I'm going to go through the uh, the um, the resign stage. I'm going to use some power of video editing. We will jump back to free agency. Let's go. All right, so we finished the resign stage. Uh, I'll give you guys a look see on our new team. Cut a few players. Brought back uh, a lot of old timers who were pain in the asses to sign. But uh, our goaltender situation: Fritz Meyer and Para, who is not showing right now because he's in the uh, he's in the system. But we have that for goaltenders. Tory Krug came back for one more year at 11 mil. Uh, Hayden Fleury, Brendan Carlo, Lambos, Kreitzer, and uh, Kat Patanoff, who's down there in the system. I don't need to show you. And then forwards, we got Braden Point, Eichel, Pasternak, Cody West, uh, Jake DeBrusque, Brad Marchand, who came back for one year, 8 million. Josh Anderson, who we brought back for another three years, or two years, yeah. We're on a two-year or three-year deal. Jacob Forsbacka, Carlson back for another three years at $4 million. Hayton, Tulipoff, Batherson, Sorelli, Vertanen, Pitkinen, all right? So parted ways with a few players here. Adam Larson was taken off the blue line, but uh, considering who we saw in free agency, I want to go back for him. We do not need any forwards. A lot of people right now in the chat, the Twitch chat, were suggesting to go after a few of these guys. 
Uh, there could be some pieces that we could put in place. But the thing is, we are very deep up front. And we have all the offense that we need. Pasternak, Point, Eichel, uh, uh, Cody West, Jake DeBrusque. We have plenty of top six offense. Uh, we could use another defender in case Kreitzer or Kapitanov aren't quite ready for year number eight. So that's why I'm bringing Larson back to a one-year deal. I want to get him back on the team just so I have some flexibility on the points. That will take all the cap space available. And also, we needed to replace our assistant coach. Hang on a second. I'll let it be a surprise. <laughs> The fans pointed it out. Steven Stamkos, who just retired, has been hired by the Boston Bruins as an assistant coach. So we took that 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 magic that the Tampa Bay Lightning had, and we're going to now use it against them. Steven Stamkos, a member of the Boston Bruin coaching staff. <laughs> and hang on, last but not least, Adam Larson is back on the team for a one-year deal, just in case our defensemen are not ready to go. And also Gorgiev. Uh, completes the four defensemen for your Boston Bruins. So let's quickly take a look at the uh, salary cap situation. We have just over $3 million of cap space, three and a half. All right, but uh, again, goalies. All right, we got four goalies now. Fritz Meyer, Gorgiev, Radulov, and Para. We're hoping for a good year out of Para. Uh, defensemen, we got seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to figure out which the best, uh, the best six are. And then forwards, we got like, 15, I think, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, Hughes doesn't count, and then 15 for Bergeron. So we have 7 defensemen, 15 forwards, all you need is 6 defensemen, 12 forwards, we are good to go. Alright, so uh, some more power of video editing. Let's get to year number 8. All right, so here we are, the beginning of year number eight. Myself, along with all the scouts in the Twitch chat, have already gone through all the lineups and made the changes. We've also extended some players to a long-term contract, so I'll go over that before we get into autopilot for the year eight season simulation. So the first line, we got Braden Point, Jack Eichel, and Cody West, baby. Uh, first time he's given first line ice time. So far, he has looked like a pure goal scorer. 29 goals in his rookie season. 36 goals, always scoring more than he's assisting. Um, he should be having 300 plus shots a season. So uh, what we're going to do is get him playing on the first line and the first line power play and uh, really maximize his ice time and see how many how many shots he can get. Now, also, he's playing with two playmakers, Jack Eichel and Braden Point. So we're going to see what that first line does. Now, that has forced David Pasternak down to the second line, but he's with Tulipov and DeBrusque. So essentially, our top six is uh, is uh, two playmakers with a sniper on both lines, all right? Not maximizing the chemistry, but with a 93, a 92, and a 93, 88, it's going to be pretty good no matter what. Third line, we got our two-way forwards, Brad Marchand, Jacob Forge, back of Carlson with a power forward with Josh Anderson. And then the fourth line, power forward Pitkinen with Patrice Berger on the captain and Barrett Hayton on the left wing. Defensively, we got Tory Krug, Brendan Carlo, the same old, same old. These guys with the plus five, they run the show for us. Carson Lambos, uh, Hayden Fleury with the plus three, and then Adam Larson, the veteran, alongside of Jorg Krutzer. Uh, we've decided that uh, Yuri Kapitanov is better suited for one year in the AHL. He didn't have the chemistry to be playing in the NHL squad, so in three years... After this cup run, we're going to have to find a new coach for Kapitanov, Tulipov, and Cody West. But um, one year in the AHL is not going to hurt him. And he's got the plus three playing alongside of Joe Lazone. So uh, that's that's all well and good. He's going to be like Kreitzer. Come up to the NHL for his rookie season in the mid-80s. All right. Uh, power play. Power play. We stacked up all of our best goal scorers with Tori Krug. Eichel passed the point West and Krug. Uh, Marchand's got second line power play time now. Penalty kill, uh, not looking the greatest, but all of our two-way forwards and our two-way defensemen uh, taking care of the penalty kill. And then our goaltender situation, we got Fritz Meyer as the starter and Para, our franchise goaltender who's grown to an 81, he is a backup. Now, remember, we won a Stanley Cup with uh, Lauren Prasad as an 82 overall goalie. I think that Caleb Para is going to grow over the course of the year. If he doesn't, I'll, I'll reassess the situation. But this team, once again, pretty much should be on autopilot. We have uh, we have enough offense to score goals. And our first line power uh, first line defense, of course, still a plus five. Second line is a plus three. So these guys are looking good. And also, Cody West, all right, to show you guys. Uh, actually, I can't show you from here. Let me bring up the contract screen. There were uh, there were three 
contract extensions that we handed out in preseason. The fans felt like it was a steal, so we went ahead with it. Hang on a second. Let me just bring it up. Uh, where are the contract extensions? Yeah. Let me go all the way out here. So this is the five-year plan that we're on. We know we have uh, Pasternak point and Eichel signed. We just got Cody West signed to an eight-year extension starting next year at $9 million per season. So a real good steal right there. I couldn't say no to that. And Carson Lambeau signed for eight years at 5.250. We only signed uh, Para to a two-year extension at uh, 800 k because after that, he wanted a lot. So... He, we're going to get a nice little steal on our franchise goalie for the next three years, and then we'll still have him as an RFA, uh, so we can either trade him or sign him, depending on uh, what our situation is. All right, so other than that, we are good to go. We're going to come back at the trade deadline, but we are going to be in autopilot. So let's see how year eight favors the Boston Bruins. Okay, so we're at the last game of the regular season. I was going to take it to the playoffs, but we have a massive final game right here. We're up against the Toronto Maple Leafs. We have 116 points. The Leafs have 115. So we're trying to win our division for like the fourth year in a row or whatever it is, right? But also... The Winnipeg Jets have 116 points as well with 81 games played. So with this victory, we can not only secure home ice advantage in the first two rounds, um, home ice advantage actually through the first three rounds, right, because the other Eastern Conference team is not there. And uh, also, with a little bit of luck from the Winnipeg Jets, we can win the President's Trophy. This is a huge game right here, all right? Even if we can't win the Stanley Cup, I want three President's Trophies in a row. Come on now. Up against the Leafs, and we don't want to give the Leafs the win in the Atlantic Division. So we're going to do a real-time simulation for this, all right, ladies and gents? Real-time. Now, I got a lot of sim... Uh, simulation ahead of me so we're gonna do quick first quick second then the real time third all right so here we go first period 2-1 lead for your boston bruins hayton and kanye west second period all right that's still a 2-1 lead president's trophy baby on the way so a times eight simulation let's see what the third period holds for us tis in the hands of the gods Come on now, Boston. All right, it's been a struggle the last few years. I know, I've been through it all with you. The general manager feels your pain. But we can showcase that we have been a very consistent team dominating the NHL. It's just we've ran into a tougher team in the playoffs. A 3-1 lead for Boston coming to the end of the game. And that's the Atlantic Division, ladies and gentlemen. The Atlantic Division, again, is awarded to the Boston Bruins. I think that's like the fourth year in a row. And did we win the President's Trophy? Did we win the 118? The Jets? 118. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Who had the regulation? It's a tie. But who had the regulation plus overtime wins? Let's see. Let's see. Point totals. Boston? Oh, no. It's not the entire league. Entire league? Boston? We're ahead of Winnipeg? It's... What? So then, does it go to wins? How does it... What, what comes after ROW? What comes after ROW? Is it W? Tie? Wait, wait, wait. What's after ROW, guys? I don't even know. And a tie with the points, then it goes to ROW. Regulation plus overtime wins. But that's a tie. It goes to wins. We got 57. They got. Oh, we got 56. They. Oh, we lost. Oh, we lost. Oh, we lost. Wins have it. Regulate. Your first. Wait a minute. Your first. What do you mean? How am I first? Goals differential? Look at the place. Oh, we are. So, what? What? Somebody, uh, what's the tiebreaker for the regular season? <laughs> I don't even know, man. Far left. It is saying we're here, but why? We have the same amount of, they had more wins. We have the tie, the regulation. Is it, is it losses? Less regulation losses on the year, so that's it. Woohoo! The defense. I don't even know what the tiebreaker is, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I'm, I'm, I'm desperately looking for the chat. Goals for? It's go People are making crazy suggestions. So we had the goals for. We had the uh, the less regulation losses. They had more wins and the same ROW. Oh my God! The, the fewer amount of games. Oh, I'm not reading all that. All right, appreciate it, guys. The point is, the Boston Bruins. For the third year in a row, have won the President's Trophy. Yes. 
All right, it's alphabetical. <laughs> you know what? Maybe in EA Sports, NHL, it is alphabetical. But the point is, we won the President's Trophy. We won the President's Trophy, right? Advanced Day. Hang on, let me just make sure that this goes through. Advanced Day. Your division is stacked. Oh, I know, dude. Every fucking year. It's absolutely stacked. Uh, uh, uh. Let me just go back to it. Let me see again. LOL, alphabetical. <laughs> Well, you know, you would I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it. Check awards. I don't think you can check awards to the end of the season. Entire league. I mean, it's saying Boston is number 1, but is that just because of alphabetical order? Whatever, man. Whatever. Whatever. I got the President's Trophy. I don't know if it's goal differential, uh losses, wins, everyone's suggesting things in the chat. Uh probably being trolled. You guys let me know in the uh in the YouTube chat, all right? You won. All right. I, uh, all right. All right. I won. We won. We freaking won the President's Trophy. Beautiful. All right. So let me just overwrite this file or create a new file. And we are in the NHL playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So let's do a whole little uh, 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 season wrap up here of our players. Before we go into the, the, the playoffs, round number one against, who was it? Oh, fuck, I forget the team that we're going up against. So we got Braden Point, 90 points, plus 27. Uh, Pasternak, point per game, 30 goals, plus 24. Jack Eichel, point per game, 30 goals, plus 32. So the three $10 million players are awesome. Uh, uh, Cody West, not quite a 50-goal season, boys. Not there yet, but he's going to get there. I guarantee you if I give him a plus five on the power play and a plus five, five on five, which will happen in like three or four years... That's when this guy's going to hit his prime. All right, so Cody West. He dropped. Oh, he dropped to an 87. Yeah, don't worry about that. It might have just been the morale from last season. But uh, he grew in every category. Goals, assists, points, plus, minus. So he's on his way up. Don't worry about anything. Uh, Brad Marchand still getting it done. 84. <laughs> he's a beast, man. Uh, uh, Jake DeBrusque. Yeah, that's a good... I mean, for a 30-goal season for a guy making 8.7, it's worth it. It is. It's totally worth it. And he's 30 years of age, still has his top six. We're going to hold on to this guy for at least a couple of years. Uh, Tulipov, 51 points. Did Tulipov have a step back? No, Tulipov grew. He had more goals, more assists, more points, and a better plus. So he grew. So that's good news. Uh, once he gets to the first line or the second line, the first line power play, he'll get more points. Unfortunately, though, for him, he's the fourth best playmaker on this team. Uh, Anderson, Jacob Forsbacka, Carlson, another 20-goal season for JFK. Uh, Bergeron, a plus three, 24 points. You can always trust him to play good defense. Uh, defenseman, Tory Crew got his plus 21, 64 points. Hayden Fleury, plus 41. Lambos, plus 49 for Carson Lambos. See what I mean? You got to have a guy like this on the team. Don't worry about his points. This guy is, he's contributing to the fact that we're the best defensive team in the NHL. 2.62 goals uh, against per game. He, he's the guy for that, you know? Him, Carlo, Kreitzer, and Larson. They're the guys for that. So I like that. Kreitzer, rookie season. Let's see. Uh, yeah, rookie season for Kreitzer. Plus 19, 20 points. Solid. Solid year for him. So he'll probably get playing alongside a Cap Capitanov in uh, a couple of years. And Larson, a plus 20. This is why I signed Larson. Now, Larson dropped off. But that's why we only signed Larson to the one-year deal, right? So Larson dropped down to an 81 overall, but he's a, still a plus 20. That's why we only saw, uh, assigned him to the one-year deal. Uh, goaltenders. All right. So who do we go with as our goalie in round number one? I think it should be Fritz Meyer until he screws up. He got his numbers back on track. I know people are going to want Para, but that's going to be the backup because his poise is 67. What's Fritz Meyer's? 70. Well, it's not that much better. Now I got to go with uh, I got to go with uh, Fritz Meyer, boys. I gotta go with Fritz Meyer first and then Para second. All right, no, I'm not doing a poll. I'm gonna go with Fritz Meyer. He got us 67. Uh, Para's the backup. If we run into problems, then we can go with Para. But I'm I'm going with Fritzy. All right, I'm going with Fritzy. Fritzy was decent for us in the playoffs last year until the finals. And then we had to take him out. Uh, he saved us when Parsons dropped the ball, though. All right, so there are the point totals. Uh, yeah, that's all that we need to look at. And who are we going up against? Oh, the oh Jack Eichel. The Revenge Series. So you're telling me Jack Eichel plays all those seasons with the Buffalo Sabres. They don't make the playoffs. And then the first full season that he's not there, they make it? Wow, man. Wow. Was he the problem? Well, the first year he went uh, with the Boston Bruins. First year he went to the playoffs. He goes all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. So I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, check Kapitanov. Yeah, I'll check out Yuri Kapitanov after this. Hang on. Let's just take a look at the team that we're going up against. So, Zykov, two-way forward. 
Ricard Raquel. What kind of season did Ricard Raquel have on the first line? Yeah, 72 points. He was a good, he's a good roster player. There's nothing wrong with Ricard Raquel. So they got they got a good trade. They did. Uh Radish, power forward. So a two-way playmaker, power forward. It could be a plus three. Uh, the Nuge, Sam Reinhardt, and uh, Palat. Damn, Palat was asking for like 9 mil, and he dropped to an 80 overall. How much is he making? <laughs> One year, 8.2 at 80 overall. Yikes. Uh, Jeff Skinner, Athanasiu, and Hancock. Uh, Baptiste, Zeri, and Mangia Payne. I got to say, on paper, we should we have these guys completely covered. All right, every line. Uh, defensively, oh my God, come on. Rasmus Dahlin's on the second line. All right, that's a great decision. Uh, so they got the superstar, but geez, they do not have any kind of blue line and goaltending. Uh, come if we don't fucking whoop these guys in five games, man. If we don't whoop these guys in five games, I'll be pissed, dude. I'll be freaking pissed. We are so much better than these freaking uh, than, than, than this freaking team. Hang on a second. I'll show you guys our lineups. No, oh, there's just no way. There's no freaking way, man. This should be a sweep. Look, Point, Eichel, West. I mean, get out of here. Pasternak, Tulipov, DeBrus. Get out of here. Marshan, Jacob, Forsback, Carlson, Anderson. Get out of here. Fourth line, a little bit weak. Fine. And then this, plus five, Tory Krug, Lambos, and Flurry, 88. Get out of here, man. And then goal 10. All right, they might have a goalie uh, advantage, but just our offense alone. Our offense should not be hindered. We should be able to score like four goals a game against these guys. All right? And you guys wanted to see Yuri Kapitanov? All right, hang on. I'll bring out Yuri Kapitanov for you guys. AHL. Let's see if he grew it all. Yeah, he stayed at 79 overall. So it was just, it was the right thing to have him play one year in the AHL. But look at that. Yeah, he's a point producing offensive defenseman. Let me tell you, he's going to have a good future here in Boston. Hell yeah. All right, so solid. All right, so is there anything I'm forgetting, ladies and gentlemen? Or can we jump right to round number one up against Jack Eichel's former team, the Buffalo Sabres? We've taken a look at the Sabres taking a look at our lineups we've won the, the 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 president's trophy are we good to go all right so we are set round one trying to get back to the stanley cup finals i mean i get nervous doing this because now it's out of my hands right i built the team and we should be on a dynasty man we won a stanley cup then we won three president's trophies in a row and each and every single year we lose to the stanley cup champions come on Come on, come on. And I want this to be a freaking domination against the Buffalo Sabres. So let's get in there. Game one, round one. Now we got the chat overlay. I want to have it on, but I don't want it blocking anything for you guys. All right. So yeah, that's, that ain't blocking shit. You guys are good. You guys are good, right? That ain't blocking shit. All it is, yeah, you can see Boston. You can see the other team. That ain't blocking shit. Get the hell out of here. That's fine. All right. So let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Very first period of game number one. Underway. Times eight simulation. <sighs> the Buffalo Sabres, don't start this again, man. There you go, Jake DeBrusque scoring for the Boston Bruins to get us all tied up at one. Now, what I don't want to see up against the Buffalo Sabres is that routine that we had in previous playoff runs where we just always screw up game number one or we can't get off to a freaking lead early, all right? I don't want to see that shit. These guys have nobody. I, 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 they may be able to score on us because our goaltenders aren't there, but with Jack Eichel, with, with Pasternak, with, as I say it, with Cody West, with Braden Point, with Tulipoff, with Jake DeBrusque, with Tori Krug, we have too many scoring options to not be averaging four goals for per game. Bottom right, you guys want it in? All right, bottom right, there you go. And go on the bottom right. Banger. Boom. All right. Uh, what the hell? 206 left. What the hell? Simulation. What? What happened? Zykov scored. How is it 2006 left in the third period? Is it because it was a power play? It goofed up? All right, resume simulation. All right, whatever. Oh my God, Buffalo's coming back. Come on, don't come back, you pieces of shit. There you go. So we got the four goals. I got what I wanted for. <laughs> I, I, I got what I asked for. Are we going to be able to keep the puck out of the net, though? We're the best defensive team during the play, uh, regular season. Come on, guys. It's ridiculous. Fritz Meyer, just do me do me this service and freaking get that big-time W. All right. All right. All right. That's what I like to see. All right? So, game number one. Uh, at home in Boston, we get four goals, four in the first, and we don't step back after that. That is exactly what I wanted to see. All right? So, we win game one. 
We get off to the playoff run and the playoff series in the right fashion. Let's not screw this up now. I would like to keep the puck out of the net. If we need to go to Parsons, not our Parsons, uh, Para as our backup, we will. All right, but uh, uh, we're going to go with Fritz Meyer for right now. All right, so let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two, round number one, up against the Buffalo Sabres. You know Jack Eichel wants to have a real good series here. Answer back against the team that couldn't even get him to the playoffs in one freaking year. And Ricard Raquel, the former Boston Bruin, the player that was a, a piece of that Jack Eichel trade offer. He ends up opening up the goal scoring, but... Tulipoff, the replacement for Ricard Raquel, the second line center of the future. He steps up, scores a goal. Braden Point scores a goal. Radish scores a goal for Buffalo. Two goals on three shots for the Buffalo Sabres. I swear to God, man. I s Patrice! Patrice Bergeron! The 77 overall $4 million player scoring in the playoffs. Who said he should be cut? You don't know what the hell you're talking about! All right, all right, all right. So, uh, two goals on four shots. I'm going to have to give Parra a chance here. But the good news is that we are scoring goals. All right? We built this team for offense. Yeah, yeah. For there's four goals. <gasps> Bergeron! Yo, does Bergeron have a hat-trick in him in the playoffs? Come on, Bergeron. Get a hat-trick here on home ice. Kanye West scoring goals. Hell yeah. But the Boston Bruins are still allowing offense against a team that didn't look like they had too much. Jack Eichel scoring goals. Yeah, this is more like it. This is what I want to see in the playoffs, man. Brad Marchand scoring goals. Eight goals for the Boston Bruins. This shit didn't happen once in last year's playoff run. Not once. Even against the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, a team that we beat in five games, four of those five games were one-goal games. I mean, we got lucky. I want to see games like... Uh, uh, five goals against, really? 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 With these pieces of shit? Fritz Meyer, what the hell are you doing back there, my man? Ain't stopping a goddamn beach ball. Five minutes left, four minutes left. <laughs> what the fuck? Why is Fritz Meyer still in there? Brennan Carlo needs to get the ninth goal of the game for insurance and a 9-6 to six victory for the Boston Bruins. Six goals on 22 shots. Fritz Meyer, what the fuck, dude? What are you doing? I don't want to take him out because we're 2-0 in the series, but... <laughs> Oof. Oof. Good lord, man. A 727 save percentage. Jeez Louise. All right, so the bad news is that we've allowed nine goals against the Buffalo Sabres over the first two games. So are we due? This is the one thing I hate about the real-time sim to the quick-time sim. We were the best defensive team in the NHL over the course of the regular season. Come playoff times, oh, nine goals against the first two games against an eight-seeded team? Of course. All right, so game number three in Buffalo. Jack Eichel returns back to Buffalo. And JFK scoring from that grassy knoll area. Giving the Boston Bruins the first, uh, first first goal of the series. McMillan, though, tying it up. Scoring on Fritz Meyer. Come on now, boys. Just freaking get... Just, just dust the Buffalo Sabres, all right? They got nothing on this team. They had a couple players. If they have chemistry, fine. But we got 90-plus overall. There you go. Jack Eichel returning to Buffalo. Get her done, son. Let the Buffalo Sabre fans know what they missed out on. I got all you studs on this team. I'm paying you freaking double digits. 10, 10 mil, 10 M, baby. Get out there and freaking earn that money. So are we due for a defensive game now? Fucking hell, Radish. All right, we're going to need that four goals by the end of the game. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. All right, so they might be due for a game here. Come on, guys. I don't want this to be a 2-1 series. Because then it could be 2-2. And then we're in trouble. Come on now. Where's our offense? Where's our offense? Where's our offense? Nowhere to be found. Where's our offense? Where's our offense? Nowhere to be found. Two power plays go. Buffalo can keep the puck out of the net, which I hate to see. Five minutes left. Four minutes left. Do we have a late goal? Just make this series nice. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. Fritz Meyer, you're done. You're done. You're out. You're out. Unbelievable, man. Unfreaking believable that this team loses to the Buffalo Sabres. Unfreaking believable. So, four goals again. So, how many is that? 13 goals against now over the first three games against the eight seed as the best defensive team in the NHL. Oh, oh, this game simulation, man. Once we get to the playoffs, dude, I just get wrecked. All right, so what I'm going to do here is goalies. Fritz Meyer, Parra, get your ass in there. I want to see what Parra does, all right? Fritz is not done yet. Fritz is not done because if Parra has a shitty game, I'm going back with Fritz Meyer. But Parra, here's your very first career NHL playoff game. What are you going to do for me, son? 
What are you going to do for me? Are you going to step up or are you going to be like these assholes in the past few years? Laurent Brassat stepped up for a year. All right, then he shit the bed. But Tyler Parsons, Fritz Meyer, they've been god awful. What are you going to do for me? Uh, not Parsons, Para. Para. Come on, Para. Let's see what you got, my man. They've only had two shots on the net, but he's made two saves. That's good. And we only got two goals in the last game, so we're due for offense, man. I, well, the thing that scared me was that one game where we had nine goals. You know, you can make the argument that we're not due now. But Pasternak is going to open up the goal scoring for the Boston Bruins. Good to see. Two, one, and the Boston Bruins have a one nothing lead after one here in game number four, right? Yeah, game four. Second period, underway, the eight to Brusque scoring. Sure, shots, there it is, to Brusque. That's more like it, boyos. All right, not even halfway through the game, and the Boston Bruins have that 3 nothing lead. And see, Parr doing a good job, just not allowing them to get back that, 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 that motivating goal. You know what I mean? Just squash them, dude. I want to see a good... Uh, that's the one thing I don't like about, like, the offense is there in this simulation, but it'd be kind of cool to build a defensive team and... And relish in these 2-1 to victories, these 1-0 to victories, you know? This is nice to see. That big zero going into the third period because of our goaltender and our defense. 14 minutes left. Come on, Para. Para's very first career NHL playoff game. What is he going to do? Jack Eichel giving him the insurance. The game is already over. Is Para going to get it? Is Para going to get it? Three minutes? Two minutes? One minute? And the kid will always remember that. His very first career NHL playoff game. And Para gets a big time shutout. All right, so we got to go with Para, don't we? We got to go with Para. All right, so can you guys remind me for next year to turn off, uh, turn back on automated goalie rotations? We're going to have to remember that, all right? So let me turn off auto goalie rotations. Uh, auto goalie rotations are off. All right. So now when we, uh, whoever we put in the, uh, the net as a starter, they'll stay in there. So let me simulate up to the next game. And uh, just in case they already made the switch before I did the simulation, let me just make sure that Para is in fact starting. All right. Para is in there. Good job, Para. Keep her going, buddy. All right. So, uh, I mean... Even though we didn't sweep them, we have absolutely dominated this series. This has felt like a, do a domination series. Uh, the one game that we lost, it was really a 2-2 tie going into the third and a late, uh, a late goal scored. And then they got the empty netter. So even in the game that we lost, it was close. It was like a one goal game. Uh, and the games that we've won, we've pretty much dominated. So uh, uh, I like the way this series is unfolding. Um, but, you know, we reverse sweep the Detroit Red Wings last year. You could get a real shitty simulation and lose three in a row. Just get it over with nice and quick. Don't give me, don't give me a reason to go back with Fritz Meyer. Just, just get it done right now. Parra, just get it done right now. Offense, get him 20 freaking goals, all right? Back in Boston. We were 2-0 here in Boston so far in these playoffs. We lost one game in Buffalo. Took the fourth game in Buffalo. Come on, baby. Power play for, uh, for Buffalo early. No, the penalty killers and Parra. They end up killing it off. Uh, the Boston Bruins not finding any offense early in the game, but a power play late in the first period goes nowhere. Another one late goes nowhere. Shots are 15 to 14 even. So Buffalo is playing in this one, but Para is uh, is uh, standing up to the task. All right, I like to see that, man. I like to see that big zero going into the intermission. Second period. Come on now, Boston. We need that goal. Somebody's got to step up. One of our $10 million men. Oh, Hancock. Was it a, a shorty? It might have been a shorthanded marker right there, ladies and gentlemen. Hancock does score on Para, but I'm not throwing him under the bus right now because where is our offense? Where is I? Uh, where is our offense? There it is. Pitkinen on the fourth line. Maybe assisted from Patrice Bergeron, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so a 1-1 tie. Shots are 30-22. to 22. This is what I mean about getting into a weird simulation, you know? We could, we could all of a sudden just score one goal this game, then the next goal that game we lose 6-5 to five because it's power in the net. Then what do I do for games? Like it's, it, I'm telling you, I don't like it. We got to win this game. All the pressure is on us right now. We have to win this game. Bergeron, Eichel, Pasternak, point. Somebody fucking step up and score a goal. Another shorty. Fucking two shorties? This is what I mean, man. I'm going to get the voodoo. They get two shorty. You got to be shitting me. Huh? Three shorty! No, there's no way. That wasn't a shorty. It must have been... Oh, my God almighty, dude. 40 shots. Lambo scores. They should not have three goals. Unbelievable, man. And we can... Unbelievable. This is why I'm telling you. 
I'm telling you, we are going to get in trouble in this series. I am telling you, we are going to get in a lot of trouble in this fucking series if this continues to... Two shorties. Fucking two shorties. Two shorties. So we're having a good fucking defensive game and we allow two shorties. And we... Oh my god, man. I swear Voodoo will always find a way to fuck me over in these goddamn simulations. Two shorthanded goals against the best power play and the best defensive uh, team in the NHL. Think about that. The best power play over the course of the regular season and the best defensive team allowing two fucking shorties in one game. And we lose the game 3-2 to two then. Oh my god, I'm telling you, we're going to lose this game like 7-6 to six, and we're going to lose in game 7. I'm telling you, I, I got the feel. I got the feel. I'm telling you, we're going to lose this, man. Oh my god, I cannot believe that. Is he still in the fight? I'm not even blaming uh, 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 Parra for that game. The offense didn't show up, and also the power play. How the fuck are you going to allow two? I swear the game finds ways for me to lose. It finds game Like, it, I just can't have a series where we get four games sweet, no problem. No, it's always got to go to six in a one-goal game. This is going to go to seven. Watch. First period, underway. Because now Parra is due for a bad game. He's had two good games. He's due for a bad game being an 81 overall. Is our offense going to show up? We get nine goals, four in the second game, and all of a sudden we can't score a goddamn goal, man. Oh my god, I hate this simulation and this... F swearing like a sailor now all of a sudden. It's just, I, uh, I put all this time in. We're freaking three hours and 20 minutes into this live stream, building a team, a great regular season, and then we hit the playoffs, and this simulation hits, and everything just changes. Pasternak ties up the game, thank god. Thank God, Jack Eichel. Wow, the $10 million assholes decide to actually play. You got no one to go up against. You got nobody to face off against. Hell, they're 94 overall players because of the plus one. G give me a freaking break. There you go, Bergeron. Leave it up to a 77 overall player to get a freaking insurance marker. There you go, Hayden Flurry. This is more like it. This is more like it. All right? This is where the goal should have been in the last game. Are we going to just get this team over and done with in six over and done with. Just get it done. There it is. All right. All right. That's more like it. It was a little shady there for a while, boys. But uh, the Boston Bruins were clearly the better team. Just pisses me off. This should have been a four-game sweep, man. It's over. It's over. I know the shots. This is what I mean. We're dominant. We're such a better team. This is what I mean. Like, I don't care about the sim. Yeah, fuck you, Hancock. All right. Go suck your own name. Oh my god, and that's it. Simulation over, and the Boston Bruins have defeated the Buffalo Sabres in six games. It took one one more than I wanted right there. Oh my god, we just found a way to lose games there. Found a way to lose games. Look at this series. Game one, we scored, but we allowed too many. Game two, we scored, allowed too many, so the friggin' Fritz Meyer was out of there. Uh, uh, no, 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 sorry, Fritz was out of there for game three, 2-2, two, two, and then he allowed two late, all right, so fine, after the first three games, they had two tight ones, so it's not even like we dominated the first three games, game one was tight, game two was tight, they, they won, all right, then we go to Para. finally we had one good game, then we lost one, like, we had two good games out of six, oh, and then the other four were tight, give me a break, all right, whatever. We're off. Save the game. Save the game. Save the game. Yes, 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 yes. I'm saving. I'm saving, boys. Don't worry. I got it. I got it. Override current file. There you go. All right. So let's advance and see what we got in round number two. Hopefully it's not Tampa Bay or Detroit. Hopefully it's not Tampa Bay or Detroit. Don't be Tampa Bay or Detroit. Don't be Tampa Bay or Detroit. Please, God, don't be Tampa Bay or Detroit. All right, the 12, oh my God, <laughs> I hate the Atlantic, 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 I hate it, I hate it, I fucking hate it, I fucking, fucking, I fucking hate it, it's not fair, man, it's not fair, I'll show you why it's not fair, I'll show you why it's not, where the hell am I going, I'll show you why it's not fair, again, second round, and I'm facing the, like, the second or third best team in the NHL, entire league, let's see, 118 points Boston, 118 points Winnipeg, 115 points Toronto, the best and third best teams in the NHL are facing each other in round number two, oh yeah, this playoff format is awesome, this playoff format is freaking just great, man, oh yeah, the Jets are out, <gasps> they, oh man, see, this is what I mean, so the Jets are out, woo, yeah, Stanley Cup, but the Leafs are in. We're gonna lose the Leafs, and the Leafs are gonna win the Stanley Cup. I'm telling you. And we're gonna uh, lose the Stanley Cup winners four years in a row. Just watch, man. I'm telling you, that's how it's gonna happen. 
I'm telling you. I, uh, all right, relax, relax, relax. Advanced day. All right, it's the Toronto Maple Leafs, the garbage. We beat them last year. We beat them like three years in, out of four, I think, in this. In this. They, they beat us once. But this is like year seven, right? So what do they have? They had a really good team. So they obviously simulate well, and they might have that plus. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> it could be a plus five. It really could. I don't know. Penalty kill two. All penalty kill lines. Forward line three, penalty kill two. They're all similar. But yeah, it could be a plus five. It could be a plus five. Fuck me, dude. So Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, they're all point per game, and William Nylander on the first line. Yeah, all 90s, so it, it's, compar it, it's comparable to ours. John Tavares, now he's dropped to an 85, but we know that veterans, even though they drop, they can still play well. Uh, uh, Brad Marchand's an 84. He's still a point per game, right? So, And that is a sniper, sniper, two-way. All right, that's not, that's a zero or a, or a minus one. So that the second line is no chemistry. Third line, Milano, Wolski, and uh, who's this Wolski guy? Trent Wolski. Sixth round playmaker made it into the NHL. Wow, good for you, kid. Uh, Kiefer Bellows, Cop, and Elephants. All right, so it's all about their top six. It's, it's all about their first line. It's, it's offense. Morgan Riley, Timothy Liljegren, right? Foot, Wallman, Spencer, Lejoy. Yep, it makes sense. These two guys could have a plus three. So it's all, yeah, they, they built their team for offense. I, I see why they're Marner, Wolski, Nylander, Matthews, and Riley. Yeah, they're at plus three for their power play then. Tavares is back here. It's all offense. And what about in the net? Mackenzie Blackwood. All right, McKenzie. All right, I still like the matchup. If we can just shut down Nylander, Matthews, and Marner, like, we can score on these guys. I'm not worried about their defense, and I'm not worried about their, their goaltending, but they can score on us as well, right? Like, that's, that's the thing. It's going to be a goal-scoring series. Uh, if we can if we can just play like the best defensive team in the NHL, that's our advantage. Our advantage is our team defense because our offense is, is right there with them. Goaltender, Para, you've been good so far, but, uh, you know, I, it's it's too small of a sample size to be like, I trust this guy. Uh, he's 2-1 and one so far, but all right. So am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? We've gone through the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, we know that Para is in the nets. We're good. Cartier, Cartier's on the team, oh great, Cartier's on the team, good, I'm sure he'll score like the game winner as well, alright, so let's just get off to the series in the right way, let's win game number one, alright, let us win game number one, so here it is, game one, and this is home ice advantage because that last game of the regular season, you know, this is huge, is that going to be the difference maker, first period is underway, and Parra is going to allow the second shot of the game, see what I mean about Parra, the sample size is just not big enough just yet, can't really just trust him as a as a go-to goaltender. But uh, we know this. We know it's going to be an offensive series. Well, we assume it's going to be an offensive series. So don't worry about one goal for. We just got to trust our boys. They answer right back. There's no way the Toronto Maple Leafs are a good defensive team. No freaking way. Power play for Boston. There it is. Brad Marchand. See what I mean? 84 overall. Guy's still point per game in the playoffs. Mr. Con Smythe. That's his name. You remember that Con Smythe season? He broke all kinds of records. Five on four power play goes nowhere. Five on four power play for Toronto. It's a long one. Shorty, good. The shorthanded goal. Go, whatever, whatever. They got a power play, whatever. It's even on that. The shorthanded goals come back towards us. Karma, baby. I deserve another one still. I'm I'm a I'm a neg a negative one still. Uh, net negative. Uh, so a two-two tie going into the third. Yep. So looks like whoever's gonna win this game might have to be four goals. You know, the team that scores four. Yeah, it's gonna be an offensive series. Four-three victory. Four-two victory. All right, so 3-2, William Nylander's going to score freaking late. Of course, Shitlander's got to be the guy. Looks like we're going to have to get two. Or an insurance marker for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, it's going to be that fourth goal. Jake DeBrusque is going to tie it up late in the third period. Ten minutes left, baby. Come on now, Boston. We want to win game one, dude. We want to take this sucker. Three minutes left. Two minutes left. One minute. And we're going overtime. Now, because I... Might have a lot of commentating still ahead of me. We're not doing live sims for overtime unless it's the Stanley Cup Finals or an elimination game, all right? I'm not jumping in. No, boys. We could be here forever. So, real-time simulation for overtime. Here we go. Come on. Let us have a hero here on home ice up against the Toronto Maple Bitches. Come on. We've scored plenty of overtime goals against the Leafs in the TD Garden. And we do... Oh! <laughs> Mr. Con Smythe, Brad Marchand, baby. Beautiful. All right. That's what we needed. And what did I say? The team that scores four goals, they're putting themselves in that position to win. It's going to be it's going to be an offensive series. But 
The same thing that happened against the Leafs last year. Even though we won in five games, four of those five games were one goal games. So again, even though we won in overtime, it could have very easily gone the other way. So thankfully, we can just get, we can't, we can't find a way to lose games. We got to find a way to win these tight games. All right. And Parra, Parra did a great job. Parra did a great job. I'm getting a little bit worried that Parra's getting taken out of the net. Hang on. Uh, hang on a second goalies yeah par is still in there come on par make a name for yourself franchise goalie and then i got him signed for another two years after this that would be beautiful for the for the dynasty man absolutely beautiful and i'm saving money on him as well so here it is game number two in boston uh the boston bruins what are we no we're not perfect at home we did lose a home game already uh but we won game one there it is game two Let's get the first goal of the game, maybe. Power play for Toronto. Goes nowhere. The penalty killers for Boston and Para up to the task of keeping the puck out of the net. Ten minutes pass in the first period. Neither team has scored a goal just yet. However, the Toronto Maple Leafs are out shooting their opponents. 14-6. to And it's going to finish 17-7 to after the first period. All right, so good job, Para. Para has been good so far early in the games. I'm liking what he's doing. Where's our offense, though? Is this going to be a defensive game? After the first game, are both teams, you know, uh, just trapping it up a little bit more. Shots are 21 to 15, so the Boston Bruins having a much better second period catching up in the shot totals. But the opening goal of the game is going to be scored by Austin Matthews for the Toronto Maple Leafs, giving them a one nothing lead. Well, it's going to be a defensive game, is it? So Parra's doing his job. Our defense is doing our job. But now, are you telling me we can't score on these guys? We have too many offensive threats, and they were not built for defense. Now, unless they have plus fives everywhere in their bottom six and their their bottom two pairings defensively, I don't want to hear it. Boston, get out there and get the game-tying goal. Get something for your fans. How are you going to charge your fans playoff hockey money and not score a goal for them? Power play for Toronto goes nowhere. The defense and the goal is doing their job, Boston. This is an example of a game that if we can steal, it's massive. <gasps> Jacob Force back of Carlson scores shorthanded. 43 shots to 27, gets overtime, gets overtime, or score a late one, I don't care, do something positive, oh my god, picking in on the fourth fucking line, and we steal one, baby, we steal one, there's an example of a fucking goaltender doing what he needs to do in the playoffs, 44 shots for the Toronto Maple Leafs, 43 saves for Para, baby, and the Boston Bruins find a way to win, Two to one. That's an example of a game that we should have lost, but we got the victory. That's more like it. That's a playoff team. That's a team that knows how to get the Ws. So even though the first two games were very tight, all right, overtime win in the second game was essentially an overtime goal because uh, that thing was scored so late. Very tight, but we come away with two Ws. That's massive, dude. That's massive. And remember, with the Winnipeg Jets being kicked out already, the Toronto Maple Leafs could be the hardest matchup that we have. So this is huge. Come on, man. If we can just get one on the road, we get three chances to get back to the Eastern Conference Finals. But we can also just dominate. We, They're due for a win, but we're also due for a domination win. Are we not? Are we not? Are we not? All right, so only f only three goals, five goals actually scored for us in regulation over the first, uh, first two games. So we are due, but they're due also. So here we go, ladies and gents. Here we go. Game three in Tirana. Hey, uh, William Neela, they're due. They are due. But Brendan Carlo, both shots, the first two shots of the game, one apiece for either team, and both goaltenders cannot save it. All right, don't worry about Apara. You got some help from Brendan Carlo right there. All you got to do is bear down right now, put your head down and grind it. All right, just let that first goal go past you. Don't even worry about it, all right? Milano is going to score for Toronto late in the first period. And is that going to be a 2-1 lead? Yes. So the Boston Bruins are out shooting Toronto 10-6. But this might be an example of a game where we are winning, but the Toronto Maple Leafs find a way to win, right? Again, the, uh, the first and third best teams in the NHL over the course of the regular season facing off against one another in round two of the playoffs. The freaking playoff format is a joke in the NHL. I'm constantly screwed over from the Atlantic Division. So it makes sense why these two teams are very close in skill. And Austin Matthews is going to give his team a two-goal advantage. So once again, going into the third period with, uh, with not a lot of offense to show for us. I'm not liking this. We had no goals in the last game. We scored two. Come on now, boys. We got another two-goal third period in us? I don't think so. Toronto's actually showing to be a pretty good defensive team. Here we go. Co uh, Kanye West getting us back within one with time. Come on, this is still a game. Don't let this one get away from you. Ten minutes. Come on, we got a late one in us. We got a late one in us. Seven minutes. Son of a bitch, John Tavares. Yeah, they were due for a game. 
There it is again, though. The four-goal game, and it favors the offense. The Toronto Maple Leafs are going to take it 4-2. to All right. Offense, I'm calling you out right now. I'm calling you out. Even though we're up 3-1 in the series, this could easily be a 3-0 series lead for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Game 1, you got 3 goals for in regulation. All right, fine. Game 2, you got 2 goals for in regulation. Game 3, 2 goals for in regulation. We need 4. We need a game where you get at least 4. All right, I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out. Calling out the offense. These Leafs are not built for offense. I know they have a good record. I don't give a shit. They're not built for offense. You guys have got to get out there and get four goals by the end of regulation. It is as simple as that. Eichel and Pasta are nowhere to be seen. I know, my man. I know, and it's pissing me off. So in Toronto for game four, a 2-1 series lead for Boston. Yet, the Toronto Maple Leafs have looked like the better team this series so far. But Jake DeBrusque is going to open up the goal scoring on the very first shot of the game for the Boston Bruins. That's good to see. Can we get a two-goal lead? Yes! Just as I asked for it. Tory Krug. All right. So we might be on pace for that four-goal game now. That para, oh, I wanted to get to the end of the first period with a two-goal lead. Ah, oh, it's a ball breaker. All right, relax. Relax, relax. This, don't worry. We got two goals. We have the lead. We just need to keep on scoring. This is a game where now we are due for offense. So I'm calling you guys out. I don't care if we're on the road. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care if you guys are beaten up because it's the playoffs. You got to find a way to uh, support your goaltender here. Look at what he's doing. He's killing off penalties for you guys. He kept he kept them to one goal uh, halfway through the game. And now they get the second goal. Man, two goals unanswered for the Toronto Maple Leafs. We get a two-goal lead. There it is, Lambos. All right, that's a big late goal. So it's looking like another game where it's going to be that fourth or fifth goal that's going to be the game winner. Unless, unless we can shut them down here in the third period. But I am not counting on that. We need offense. All right, guys, we need that fourth goal. We need a game where we get four. All right, it's as simple as that. Our main guns, Eichel, Pasta, Point. I'm calling on you three. Let's go, boys. Step on up to the plate and get us that insurance marker. Josh Anderson, leave it up to the power forward on the third line, baby. That's that depth. Kapanen, yep, 4-3. Might even be five, man. Ten minutes left. Come on, defense. Come on, Para. You got to find a way to win this. This is a 3-1 series lead or a series tie at two. Come on, Para. Come on, Para. Come on, 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 come on. And Adam Larson is going to get that empty netter, and that's what we needed. The 5-3 empty net victory. So essentially, it was a 4-3 win, right? The empty netter, you can count, but it was a 4-3. That's what we needed. The four regulation goals, all right? That's what we needed. And Para, he, he, did, he played fantastic. Even though it was three goals against, the Leafs are built for offense. So whatever, man. As long as we're, we're, we're shutting them down when we have enough goals, he's having a good series. And that is a 3-1 series lead. So again... That was a game where we, it was an empty net. So all three of our wins have been one goal games. We are finding a way to win this, but this could have easily been a sweep for the Toronto Maple Leafs. It really could have. I mean, an uh, overtime win, 2-1 win that we came back late in the third, 4-2. Like they had a one domination victory. Actually, that was an empty net as, as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Every game has been a one goal game, except for the ones with an empty net. Oh, Jesus. This is certainly the Stanley Cup Finals right here. And I got three chances to win. All right, Para, my man. I mean, we came back from 3 nothing down against Detroit last year, right? I know teams can come back from 3-1 down. It's not that big of a hill in hockey. It really isn't. It happens all the time. And I you know what happens a lot more. A 3-1 that gets pushed to Game 7 where the team still wins. But, I mean, this, this series is far from over. So we need offense again. We need offense. We need a game where our offense just steals one of them. Scores like seven goals. Jacob Fors back of Carlson. I, that might have been a shorthanded goal right there. He's going to score from the slot. It, yeah, it was a shorty. So we got our two shorties back. So those two shorties that we allowed in Round 1, we got them back. We're in the net. We're in the net even. All right, five minutes left. Come on, get to the end of the first period with that one goal lead. Can't do it again. And all, another ball buster. John Tavares is going to score, but it was only a one goal lead. We know the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to be a real tough team to shut out, so don't worry about it. We need our offense. We need our offense to command a game and score like six or seven goals. They have the, they have the capability. The Toronto Maple Leafs are not built for defense. All right, and we haven't had that game just yet where we've beaten them cleanly by more than one goal. So we're due for it, and we got three chances for it. So... Uh, I'm, I'm, I feel like we're in a very favorable position right here, but you never know with the EA Voodoo simulation. End of the second, Patrice, Patrice, he knows how valuable this season is. He can feel the old legs uh, 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 just, just sliding out from underneath him. 
It's now or never for Patrice Bergeron. Six trips to the Stanley Cup Finals, three and three. That's the best he can hope for, all right? Third period, boys. Third period, just get through the Toronto Maple Leafs in freaking five games, man. No problems, no fuss, nothing. Just get through. Third period, underway. Controllers down. Power play doesn't go anywhere. Power play. The Zebras want Boston in the conference finals. Motherfucker. The Zebras now have given it back to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Come on, Para. Para. Is it? Mm, not yet. Para's not ready yet. We need offense. Bergey! Fucking Captain Bergey, baby. Who said he's not ready for the playoffs? He's fucking ready. Ah! Mitch, you son of a bitch. Four minutes left. Three minutes left. Two minutes left. One minute left. Ah, it's overtime. It's got to be overtime again. We had a fire. Well, elimination game, ladies and gentlemen. Elimination game. You know what that means. <laughs> Game five. All right. Uh, I wish I could tell my team to not dump it in, but whatever, man. It's the Boston. It's it's my coach setup. I got. I have to roll with it. Oh fuck. All right, come on, man. Get to the Eastern Conference Finals. I hate this. I hate this third period comeback. I hate. We're we're gonna lose in Game Seven. We are going to lose in Game Seven, ladies and gentlemen. I hate it. So here we are, overtime in Boston. If the, if the Boston Bruins can get that goal, they're off to the Eastern Conference Finals after five games against the Toronto Maple Leafs. If the Leafs can get the goal, they get to go back to Toronto down 3-2 in the series. So this is massive, ladies and gentlemen. Kanye West. Oh, he's going to find Jack Eichel. The Eichel Tower looking to get that shot off. Can't get it, though. Here, Cody, Cody West and Jack Eichel on the same line. That's looking good as Mackenzie Blackwood is going to have to smother that puck. I know, look at the, I know, all right, his laces. Kanye West has got, like, some green neon laces out there. <laughs> it looks great. All right, so we just got to make sure that their first line gets off the ice, and then we can take advantage. Eichel wins the faceoff. Krug. Oh, that was the shot. Krug. Clap bomb along the ice. That's going to be Mackenzie Blackwood throwing it into the corner. Oh, Morgan Riley almost had the puck stripped. And here comes Austin Matthews, the big American. Oh, Jesus. Please don't let... Uh and the old offensive defenseman, Tory Krug, not using his legs. Instead, going in for the hook. Tory, what are you doing? He saw Mitch Marner. He's like, no, I can't allow him. Ah, oh, Tory Krug, he's an old man now. Remember, he's 30-something. He, he Asking for all that money each year, and then you do that in the playoffs. Thanks a lot, buddy. All right, so it's their second-line power play. With that. Uh oh Johnny T, the wrist shot. What a great save by Para. All right, Para, it's all on you, my man. You got a full two minutes right here. Oh man, the time scaling is 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 exactly how long the clock is. This is the 12 seconds, 14 seconds to get back up the ice. Damn it, cop. No, oh, he tries to center it out in front. Come on now, boys. We're really gonna have to shut it down for two minutes here. Oh my God. Oh, what happened? What the fuck was that? And the Boston Bruins have conceded the goal. Oh, Bergeron is pissed at Tory Krug. I don't even know how that game, uh, that goal went in. What the hell just happened? Oh, we're going to have to get an instant replay of that, ladies and gentlemen, once the game gives me back control. Oh, oh, wait, wait. oh my God. Kapanen, like, missed the shot twice. The puck was being broken out, and then did our guys lose it? Did he get poked? Number 22 might have poked it right to Kapanen right there. That's horrible defense. Well, it was like a, a turd in front of the net. I have to get an instant replay. I can't actually hit A, though, because it's a CPU versus CPU game. And oh, when that happens, the game doesn't give you control to skip cutscenes. Maybe they'll introduce that in NHL 30. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so hang on a second. Instant replay. What the hell happened here? All right, so the power play was the reason why this went in. I mean, goddamn. Again, a pass. Guy backwards skating on his backhand. Yep. Tries to shoot it. Goes nowhere. Lambos. Yeah, he just got, it's not even, it wasn't even that bad. It's not even like he made a bad pass. It was on his stick and immediately poked off his stick straight to, I mean, it was just, oh, oh what a horrible turn of event. Oh, we're going to lose, man. We're going to lose in seven games. We're going to lose. We're going to lose. We're going to lose. Sorry, boys. We're going to lose. This is what happens when you go up 3-1. Uh, and every single game has been a, a, a struggle for the Boston Bruins. We can't get one easy victory over the Toronto Maple Leafs. We can't get one, like, two or three goal game. Not one. Not one. Not one. Not one. Every single win's got to be a one goal win. And when they win, they dominate us. Oh, my God. We're due. Well, we are due. We are due for, like, look, I'll show you. We are due. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, right? But with the simulation 
it'll all balance out in the end. 4-3 overtime, that was three goals in regulation. 2-1, that was a lucky victory. That's a loss. That's supposed to be a loss. 4-2, that's a loss. All right? That was a 4-3 game. So that was one good game. But again, it was a one-goal game. That was an empty netter. All right? And then another game, three goals. We allowed two in the third period. Where's the game where we get five goals by the end of regulation? Where's the game where we get four goals by the end of regulation? Only once. Only once so far in five games against a team that is not built for defense. That's what I'm saying. We're due for a game where we just win like five in regulation, where we get like five in regulation. I mean, they'll probably get five as well, push it overtime, then I'll end up. Oh, all right. Well, whatever. Whatever. I just got to go into it. I can feel it. We're going to lose the Leafs, and the Leafs are going to win the Stanley Cup, guys. I'm telling you. In Toronto. Para, good luck, boys. All right, Jake DeBrus. That's what I like to see. One shot, one goal. That's good. That's a good way to start. It's a good way to start. We're also out shooting them. I like to see that as well. But I just, I've, I've had so, Pasternak giving us that two goal advantage. I like to see it. We're due for a game like this. Can we get that three goal lead? I don't think I've seen a single three goal lead here in this entire series. The Toronto Maple Leafs deserve this. This is a Stanley Cup Finals matchup. So maybe it, it's supposed to go to game six or game seven. But fuck it, man. I just want to win a Stanley Cup with Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand one more time and win a dynasty. Please. All right, come on, baby. Come on, baby. A two-goal advantage. Two-goal advantage. Just maintain. Second period. Underway. Power play. Power play for the Boston Bruins. Goes nowhere. Whatever, man. We already we already have the two goals. Another power play for Boston. Whatever, man. Para, it's all on you. Defense, it's all on you. I don't know if we're going to be able to score goals against the Toronto Maple Leafs. We haven't done it all freaking uh, a series long, so maybe they are built for defense. We just get, This is the game we got to win. Oh, fuck. Fucking hell. That's like the third time in this damn series they've had a ball breaker of a goal right before the end of the fucking period. And it's Johnny T again. I'm not blaming Para. I'm not blaming Para. But here's what happened in the last game, right? We had a 2-1 lead going into the third. We scored one. They scored two. 3-3 three, three going into overtime. We started this game two goals early. Are we going to get to four or five by the end of regulation? Or are we going to lose 3-2 three, or 3-3 three, three in overtime or 2-2 two, two in overtime? This is the problem. We can't fucking score. Para, I need you. I need you, Para. This is your this is your coming out party, Para. This is the coming out party. Please, Para. Please, 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 please. Third period. Underway. Game six in Toronto. <gasps> Fourth line, Barrett Hayton. All right, still only a two-goal advantage. We need more offense. We need more offense. Or is Parra going to just play great goaltending for us? Ten minutes left. Please, boys, please. 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 Five. Four. Three. Two. Lambos and the Boston Bruins. We were due for it, boys. We were due for it. No empty netters, but a three-goal advantage, and we defeat the Toronto Maple Leafs 4-1 to in an absolutely dominating fashion. 38 shots to 25, four goals for, one goal against. That's more like it. We were due. We were due for a game like that, and we have conquered the Leafs in six games. Now, that series should have been a lot closer. They could have easily beaten us. They could have easily beaten us in that series. I got lucky. Whatever. I'll take it. All right? Because, oh, no. No. Oh, come on, Island. You know what? If I say come on, Islanders, then the Islanders will beat it. Oh, no. No. And who's over there? Chicago and Edmonton and Colorado. Whatever. Whatever. Can't worry about it. If you're going to win the Stanley Cup, you got to go through some tough teams. It don't matter. All right? So, we got that victory. Let's advance the day. Let's get to it. Who are we taking on in the Eastern Conference Finals, ladies and gentlemen? It's... The Detroit Red Wings, the last time we faced them, they beat us out after winning the Stanley Cup, or it was the second year after winning a Stanley Cup, and then they went on to win that Stanley Cup that season. Another team that we just constantly have to face in the playoffs. Nothing but Atlantic division teams. Nothing but Atlantic. Atlantic, Atlantic, Atlantic. Everywhere Atlantic. Alright, let's take a look at what we're going up against here. At least they don't have Larkin anymore. Larkin moved on. Larkin, they had Larkin the year that they were stacked. So, let's see. And Taylor Hall's dropping off. Now, he's still 87 overall, and we've seen what Brad Marchand does. So, you got to treat him with respect. But Rasmussen, he's just, oh, two snipers on the first line. But a playmaker. It could work. Might be a plus one, might be a plus three. Don't know. So, it's not a bad first line. Second line, uh, Avery Lees. He's got t 10 goals in 13 games played. Holy shit. Kevin Hayes and uh, Philip Zadina. Uh, power forward, sniper, two-way forward. I wouldn't say that's a, I'd say that's a zero, maybe a plus one. 
Uh, Tyler Bertuzzi, Joe Valeno, and Ruben Jennings, a real good third line. And if that's plus one, three, or five, oh my god. And then Nemesnikov, McCann, and Janssen, Falalbi. Yeah, they got a good team. They got a good team. Defensively, Butcher, Claremont, uh, Bowie, Nyquist, Willanen, and Chalowski. Claremont is the defensive defenseman, right? Yeah, they're built for defense, these guys. Because they have two-way defenders, defensive defensemen. Uh, their first line is snipers, but then two-way power forwards, two-way, two-way. Yeah, they're built for defense. They're built for defense. All right, so defensemen and special tas or uh, special teams four on four power play or five on four power play. Ehlers, Valeno, Zadina, Taylor Hall, and Avery Lees. Their defense is horrible. Uh, I don't think it's that bad because if it's a plus three, remember you got to look. Imagine it's a plus three or plus five. And a defensive defenseman with a two-way defenseman. Yeah, I mean, they're they're probably working. If not, then it's not the greatest. And then Carter Hart? Yeah, and then Carter Hart. Right, they're built for defense. They are built for defense. Even though he's only had an 8.89 save percentage in the playoffs, they are built for a defense, this team. So will we be able to score? And uh, will we be able to keep the puck out of the net? I, I don't know how well we're going to play defensively against them. And I don't know if we're going to be able to score goals. Because every freaking year we run up against Detroit, it's a tough freaking series. All right? So, let me just edit the lines. Hang on a second. No Mantha. Check injuries. There are no injuries. So, they, they just don't have Mantha on the team anymore. He must have moved on. Uh, why am I going to scratch players? I'm looking for Mantha. It's not on my team. Uh, goalie. So, Para, 9-2-1 save percentage so far in the playoffs. Para, Caleb Para, you're doing a good job, my man. Keep it going. Where's the Tank and Larkin? I know Larkin left. The Tank is just not there, guys. Okay, here we are. Back at it once again. The Eastern Conference Finals. Second year in a row and going up against a familiar face, the Detroit Red Wings. They're built for defense. Carter Hart, uh, defensive defenseman that may have a plus three or a plus five even. No, 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 plus three because it's not an offensive defenseman. And then they had a team full of two-way forwards and power forwards, right? So home ice advantage because of our regular season. President's Trophy again, three years in a row. Game one, we have a goaltender who's doing his job, and Brad Marchand scoring. Uh, we're getting shorthanded goal. Another shorty. All right, so that's three shorthanded goals for us in the playoffs. No, maybe it is working out for us. <laughs> we're plus one now for shorties. All right, that's what I like to see. All right, that's what I like to see. A one nothing first period. Good job, Para. I'm really liking. Uh, I'm really starting to like Para, man. He's gonna cost a lot in three years if he has success with us. Oof, it's going to be a three-year run with this guy because then he's going to want like $10 million. But Philip Zadina, he is going to tie up the game about halfway through, and we have a 1-1 tie. Shots are pretty even. Power play for Detroit late in the second. Goes nowhere. Five minutes left, four minutes left, and Chalowski is going to get a late second period goal to give the Detroit Red Wings a 2-1 lead. Now, so far in these playoffs, we've won games one both times, which is what I like to see because the previous years, We'd always lose game number one. Now, this game's not over, but where the hell, where the hell, where the hell is our top guys? They didn't show up against Toronto. All right, first line, man, come on. Where the hell are you guys? You guys got to show up here on home ice, don't you? Third period, underway. A 2-1 lead for Detroit. Uh, defensive series, it looks like. Do we have a goal? Come on, man, 10 minutes. Give us something. Ah, Jared McCann is going to score for the Detroit Red Wings. And there you go. Oh, of course. A little bit too late there, Braden Point. Yeah, Taylor Hall. They're just gonna keep it a two goal advantage. Yeah, if we're gonna get if we're gonna score two goals and expect to win, it's not gonna happen. All right, so the Detroit Red Wings come into Boston and they beat us by two goals convincingly. The third goal is an empty netter. Whatever. All right, it's one game. We're not gonna make anything happen. Whatever. All right, so five to two. Let's just let's just brush it aside. Para had a par allowed four goals and we only scored two goals, so everyone was off that game. They're playing like shit the whole playoffs. I know, man. I, I don't know how to get them going. Time to change the top line. Hang on. It's one loss. It's one loss. Let's see what we got here. All right. So far, these lines have delivered us a pretty good playoff run. Let's just see. Let's just, let's not go crazy here. All right. So first period. There you go. Brad Marchand again scoring. Avery Lees, though. It's going to be Lees versus Lambos to the end of their careers. Who's going to have the better one? But Jack Eichel. There you go, Jack Eichel. That's what we needed. And Jake DeBrusque. That was that's exactly what we needed. But Taylor Hall answering back now. Now, here's the scary thing. You know, are they capable of keeping up with us when we actually do score goals? Because that's going to suck. If we actually have a game where we get four or five and they manage to tie it up and win in overtime, it's going to be the exact same thing that happened in game two against the Toronto Maple Leafs where they were up by one, we tied it up late, and we won it late. 
We can't allow them to steal a game when we actually score goals because Carter Hart is going to be due in this series. So second period underway. We have a one goal advantage. That's what we need to continue doing, guys. Four, five, six. Let's go. Fucking hell, man. The games that we score, they start scoring. That's such a pain in the ass. Are you telling me the Detroit Red Wings are an offensive team as well? We're the best defensive team in the NHL over the course of the regular season. Don't freaking do this to me, man. God damn it, EA Sports. Oh my God! Oh, back-to-back -back games. Games one, games two. Four goals against. I, I cannot stand the simulation in this. It's just so goddamn all over the place. So we got a we got a big uh, we got a I mean Bertuzzi and McCann. We got a big um. We have a oh man, I can't even talk. We're very vulnerable uh, vulnerable here to lose a game that we should win, and then we're down two nothing in the series, and they'll be due. You know what? We have to win this game. We have to win this game. Come on, guys. Uh, we actually got four goals, and now we're allowing goals again. And I'm not going to blame Parr. He's been there for us. A rookie goalie, for fuck's sake, man. Jack Eichel, we're going to... Oh, we have to win this game. A game where we got five goals in regulation. We have to win this. Holy shit, man. Holy shit. Best defensive team in the NHL over the course of the regular season. Six goals against in the playoffs. Ten goals against, oh yeah, eleven goals against, oh my god, we get six goals and we can't fucking even get to overtime. We get six goals and we can't get to overtime. I hate this simulation engine. I hate this simulation engine. It is such a fucking joke, man. It really is. <sighs> the empty net in the game one doesn't count for them. But So four goals and then seven goals. Plus fucking eleven. Eleven regular, uh, um, regulation goals. Over the course of uh, the first two games. And yet we were the team with the least amount of regulation losses in the NHL over the course of the regular season. And just We just turn into a completely different team. How is Detroit doing this? And, and we are not. How is Detroit putting up these kind of numbers and we can't? With our fucking studs on this team. Point, Eichel, and West. What are they doing? I mean, he's a minus. West, what have you been doing too? I mean, we got to change this up. It ain't working. It ain't working. Yeah, it ain't working. It ain't working. All right, I gotta, I gotta change this up. Yeah, West is missing out, so I'm going back with Pasta. We're getting our main guys up there. All right, we're gonna go with uh, the playoffs uh, that worked out last year for us. All right, Eichel, you're gonna go down there. Brad Marchand, get your ass up there. All right, DeBrusque. Uh, do I have like, I get like Josh Anderson on the second line, get a plus three in there. How about like uh, DeBrusque West. Tulipoff. It's the only problem is I have to get Tulipoff there on the third line. So playmaker, playmaker, playmaker. Then Dabrowski. Yeah, that could work out actually. Anderson, Eichel, and West. Yeah, because I got to get Pasternak in point and give the Brad Marchand a chance. Because pa Brad Marchand, even though he's a minus five, um, he's been good for us in the past. Now, hang on. Is there anything else I could do? Point. Yeah, see, I can get Point and West at a plus three, but then Anderson's getting first line time as a plus six. Uh, and then, like, a DeBrusque right there. Could that get a plus one? That could do it. That could do it. We could try that for a game. Because you're getting Point to a 96. You're playing Eichel with Pasta and DeBrusque. West is getting up a little bit higher. And then you got Anderson there. That could work. It could work. Bergey to the first line. Hang on a second. Let me just look around what I could do here. Uh, defensively, defense stays. Uh, but I could also make the power play because the power play ain't scoring. So we could try to get that plus three for the power play like we were trying to, uh, before, right? So West, you're coming off the power play for DeBrusque. All right. Uh, Eichel, you're coming off for Tulipoff. Point. No, 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 no. Hang on. Who was the, the playmaker? There it is. Plus three on the power play. There you go. And then the second line power play is going to be point... Eichel, West, Fleury, and Marchand. So you just stack up the second line power play and you get the plus three for Pasta and Krug, essentially. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta try to shake it up a little bit. I gotta try to shake it up a little bit. All right, yeah, that sounds good. And then also what I'm gonna do for the, um, what I'm gonna do for the penalty kill, I'm gonna take off Patrice Bergeron for the, uh, the penalty kill. Just, I don't know if he's good enough anymore. I'm gonna put, uh, Hayton's already out there, right? Yeah, Hayton's already out there. Jacob Force back of Carlson's already out there. I'm going to put my big guns out there. Whatever. Braden Point, get out there and kill a penalty. All right, you're on the second line. Oh, actually, I'll give it to Jack Eichel because he's on the second line penalty kill. Oh, yeah, the second line five on five. There you go. 
All right, so we're going to go with that. Uh, Fritz Meyer? No, I'm going to leave it with Para, guys. Para got us this far. Fritz Meyer did shit all in the playoffs. I'm leaving it with Para. It's not his fault. It's the offense. The offense has got to get going. All right, so we'll change up some things for game three. If we lose this game, then I'm just going to go like the regular season lines again. Uh, remember, we fell down 3-0 to the Detroit Red Wings last season and came back and reverse swept them. So, I mean, they're, they're a good team. But uh, we got, oh, I can't believe we scored six goals. And <laughs> I'm going to do it again, man. We're going to lose to Detroit. They're going to win a Stanley Cup. All right, here we go. So the first line, who's on the first line again? Let me just, it's, uh, it's Anderson, uh, 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 West, and Point. Anderson, West, and Point, Pasta, Eichel, DeBrusque. All right, and then Tulipov is on the third line with Jacob Forsbacca and Marchand. So Point, West, and Anderson. So we're really going with Point and West, all right? We need Point and West to show up here. They got the plus three on that first line. Anderson as well, but they got the plus three. And then Jack Eichel gets Pasternak to play on the second line, all right? So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game three in Detroit. The changes have been made. How are they... Uh, how are they going to affect the simulation? As we take a five on three to start the game. Great fucking job, you idiots. Ten minutes left here in the first period. Zero, zero. That's what I like to see, but I want some offense, man. I want some offense. That pisses me off about the last game because now we're due for a game where we don't score. You know? We got the six goals, but we didn't get the win. It's... Oh my God! We are just due for a, we're, we're, we're due for losing in this playoffs, man. It just cannot get anything going. A goal with 57 seconds left by Tori Krug and then Avery Lees. Five seconds left. Let's tie it up with a freaking ball buster. All right. Third, uh, second period underway. What do we got here? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Boston, Patrice Bergeron, unbelievable. Patrice Bergeron, 77 overall. He's out playing these guys who were in their 90s. In their fucking 90s. Fourth... The fourth line. The fourth line is scoring. I have all these studs in my top six. I'm paying all this goddamn money to all these studs in the top six. And it's my fourth line. And another ball buster right before the end of the fucking period, man. So here we go again. Another game where we got the three goals. Might even get four or five by the end of regulation. We're going to find a way to lose this game as well. Third period underway. Go ahead, Detroit. Have a blast. You know you want to. You know you freaking want to. 15 minutes left. Come on, Boston. Top six. Where are you? Pasternak on the second line. Marchand on the third line. That's more like it. All right, so back-to-back -back games. We got the five goals. Five or six. Come on now, Para. Para, don't do this to me. Don't fucking do this to me, Para. Don't do this to me, Para. Don't do this to me, Para. All right, good. Tory Cruz scores, and that's more like it. The Boston Bruins are right back in the series. All right. We're right back in the series. Even if they make it 3-1, to one, you can win three games in a row. All right. So the boys uh, stepped up for us in that one. All right. Plus three for Tory Crew. Good. Five points for Tory. More. That, you keep doing that, and I'll pay you $20 million next season. Anderson, two points, plus one on the first line. Carlo Marchand. So Anderson got a plus. Okay. Yeah, that worked. That worked. I'm not changing anything, guys. We just got the W. We just got the dub. I ain't changing a goddamn thing. Uh, sim to next game. All right, here we go. Uh, all right, so a 2-1 series lead for the Detroit Red Wings. We came back from 3-0 down last year. I don't want to have to come back from 3-1 down, so let's tie this series up at 2. Come on, come on, come on. Let's tie it up at 2. Here we go. Underway, baby. Underway. Uh, Boston, Jacob DeBrusque. Beautiful. He's going to get the opening goal. Ah, Janssen Falby, their fourth line scoring on Para. All right, there it is, Tori Krug now. All right, so all of a sudden our offense is scoring. It, they have responded to the line changes. Power play for Detroit goes nowhere. Oh my God, man. What the f Oh. I just, I, I, I don't know what it is, man. I build my team for defense with the best defensive team over the course of the regular season. And just like, they just sim three goals on eight shots. Yeah, well, they're due, I guess. The Brus, come on, we got to try to find a way to win this game. They might continue to score. But we, ha we ha it's a tie game. We can't let, us, let it get away from ourselves. Even though it's, it's completely demoralizing when I see this shit. Oh, four goals. Like, you just can't stop them. You can't stop them. They just keep scoring. It's so fucking annoying, man. I'll go up 2-0 in the first, and by the end of the third period, it's 3-2 them. They go up, and every time I score, they answer right back, man. 
All right, so we got two goals that period. They got one. It's a 4-4 tie. S only 17 shots apiece, and yet eight goals have been scored. 34 shots and eight goals have been scored. Okay, come on. Offense, I need you. I need you to just to outplay them. All right, I don't know if Parra is here in this game. Dude, I need you guys. I need you. They have already been showing up, but you... you you got to do something here to, out, to, to to beat the Detroit Red Wings. We can't fall down 3-1. Come on, man. Power play for Detroit. Fuck you, referees. God damn it. Let them play. 15 minutes left. 13 minutes. Come on, Boston. Do we have a hero? Oh, my God, Zebras. Just keep on gifting everything to the fucking Detroit Red Wings. Five minutes left. Four minutes left. Three minutes left. Two minutes. One minute. And it's going overtime. All right. Overtime, ladies and gentlemen. Watch it. No, not going to watch it. I don't want to ruin my voice. We could have like seven overtime games in the Stanley Cup Finals if we get there. Nope, nope. I know I want to watch it, but I'm not going to. All right, the last time, and plus, the last two times we've gone in and watched it, we lost in game six of the Stanley Cup Finals last year, and we just lost in uh, round two to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. I'm not watching it. I'm not watching it. Overtime. We got the overtime sim voodoo. It's going to be on our side. 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 Oh, what the fuck are you guys doing? It's going to be on our side. It's going to be on our side. Please be on our side. Eichel. Oh my God, Zebras. That's like four in a row, dude. Fuck. Ten minutes. Everything, everything, everything. I just can't buy a. F oh my god! So a game where we score six goals, we lose, and a game where we score four goals, we lose. And the Detroit Red Wings can just score at will. Oh, let's see the penalty chart. Oh yeah, in overtime, West takes a two-minute minor for hooking. Anderson two-minute minor for interference. What about the third period? Oh yeah, Boston Tulipov two minutes for tripping. Anderson two minutes for interference. Pitkin in two minutes for elbowing. What about the second period? Oh wow, they got one. What about the first period? Oh wow, wow, wow. So in the third period, two and the overtime period, five straight power plays for the Detroit Red Wings. Give me. The simulation is so random. And we're down 3-1. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We actually had three good games in a row. And we only have one win to show for it. Six goals for, six goals for, four goals for, and we have one W. It's over. It's over. Whatever. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. It's all over. I mean, I, it was an overtime loss, so I guess we're playing fine. I'm just going to leave the lines the way they are. Yeah, fuck it. I'm leaving the lines the way they are. I'm not making any changes. Whatever. It's over. The game wants me to lose. I'm going to lose, and Detroit's going to win the Stanley Cup. It's just, it's it's what we're destined for here in Boston. Great regular seasons, great uh, President's Trophy runs, and then defeated against the Stanley Cup winner in the playoffs. It's just the way it is. Go ahead. Score all you want, Lambos. We're down 3-1 in the series. There's no way in hell we're coming back against the Detroit Red Wings. No way. Detroit is your bitch? No, we're Detroit's bitch. We can't do anything against the Detroit Red Wings. They lose Mantha. They lose, uh, uh, what's his name? Larkin. And they're still going up 3-1 in the series against me. Last year, again, I was the president's... Think about this. Two years in a row, right? Two years in a row, we won the president's trophy. Last year, we fell 3-0 to the Detroit Red Wings. This year, we fell 3-1 to the Detroit Red Wings. I mean, what else do I have to do? Why aren't they, why aren't they winning uh, the president's trophy then, EA Sports? If all of a sudden they're the, they're the kryptonite for the Boston Bruins in the playoffs, why aren't they winning the President's Trophy? Watch the game. I don't care if the game's tied up, boys. We can score all the goals we freaking want. We ain't winning three games in a row. It's just not going to happen. All right? It's just it's not going to happen. I've seen this story ha um, be told before. It's not going to happen. Even if we win this game, then we'll force a game six. And we'll have a three-goal lead in game seven in the third period. They'll score four goals in the final two minutes. Trust me. All right? I'm destined to lose. I am destined to lose in this piece of shit game. Oh, hey, what do you know? We won game freaking five. All right, so we're going to a game six. Keep going, Johnny. Keep on bitching. Uh, it's not bitching, man. It's just like, uh, like, look at the regular season records. We had 10 less regular uh, re regulation losses on the year than they did, which means that in regulation, five on five, we're dominant. We're dominant. And yet we're down 3-1 in the series. It just doesn't, it just doesn't add up, man. It does not add up. All right, save the game and back out. No, we're not doing that. In Detroit, game six, all the pressure's on them, whatever. I already know the series is over. At least I'll take uh, a comfort in the fact that, again, we lose to the Stanley Cup winning team. I got, you know, President's Trophy and losing to the best team in the NHL in the playoffs. I mean, I, 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 can, I can argue for the owner for my job, right? You wouldn't fire a general manager after that kind of season, would you? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a blast with the ball buster goals. Yeah, just keep it going. Keep it going. Eight seconds left in the first period. Keep on going. There you go, Jake DeBrus scoring on Carter Hart. I'd love to try to build a team defensively, you know, and, 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 and take pride in keeping the puck out of the net. We can do it in the regular season, but once we hit the playoffs, dude, these teams... I, and EA, you know what you got to do if you're going to add in these coaching updates with chemistry? Can you put it so that when I view lines, I can see the chemistry? Because I have no clue why the Detroit Red Wings are simming so well. They don't have anything on the team, and yet they are dominating me. So why? What are they, is it a plus fucking 17 for every goddamn line or some shit? Oh yeah, have a blast. Come on back. Tie up the game at four. Another game where we score. Look, five on three. The Zebras now are going to win it for them. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A, a whole third period uh, uh, penalty kill for the Boston Bruins right there. Five minutes, four minutes, three minutes. Come on. Get the late goal. Get the late goal, Detroit. Get the late goal. I'm going, and I'm going. I got to watch it because it's a... Oh, whatever. All right. Fine. I'll jump in and watch it. So, here we are in overtime. Bad news is that the overtime... Oh, shit. Oh, we have 34 seconds on the power play. Incoming shorthanded goal, ladies and gentlemen. Just wait. Joe Valeno is going to snipe it through like five different players here. I can't. I just can't. I just can't. I just can't, dude. I cannot. I can't. <laughs> Good job, Tulipoff. Yeah, way to poke. Five on four. Just keep on poking. I was going to say, the last uh, two games that we jumped into, we lost. The last game that we jumped into, our team took a penalty, and then fucking they score right away. Oh, just maybe, maybe, maybe we score in the next 25 seconds on a four-on-four. Four. Or maybe they score right away. Will Butcher. Center it. Game over. You fucking bitch taking Datsuk's 13. You don't fucking deserve it. Ugh. Hey guys, Johnny here and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and make sure notifications are on so you don't miss out on any new content. We also live stream on Twitch where I take days off my life for your entertainment. Sonny Gray, get out of it. You stupid pieces of shit. I should have gone with Jose for Nandez. Oh my God, pitching change. Fernandez, get your ass in there. Oh, I swear to God, baseball gods just decided to
all over me. Grand Slam, oh yeah. Make me miss the playoffs with a first ranked team. Year two, 30 games above 500, no divisional win. Trip to the wild card. First inning.